Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Heather and today I am bringing back to you another dresser flip. Now this flip didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to in the beginning of this flip. I thought I would be doing a whitewash dresser flip, but it didn't exactly go that way. I ended up going with a black and stained combo and I think it turned out really nice, but there were quite a few bumps in the road to get there. If this is something that you are interested in, all you have to do is keep on watching. All right, so this is going to be the dresser that we're working on. It is a huge nine drawer dresser that I got off of Facebook Marketplace for only $20. You can tell it's pretty outdated just by the color and there are a few things that need some TLC. We are going to be starting this makeover off by taking off the hardware. Quite a few pieces on this hardware is broken and it doesn't fully function as it should. So once it's off, it's going to be off for good. I'm going to set it aside. You can tell that the hardware is most likely original to the piece. It's pretty tarnished and it's just not a pretty look. Some new modern hardware will definitely bring all of this together in the end. Not only am I taking the hardware off of the drawer fronts, but also those doors as well. Once we finish up taking all of the hardware off, I grab a bag to put them in so I can keep the set together. A lot of the time I like to label the bag so I can refer back to it later if need be. Then it's time to clean. I like to use Dawn dish soap. I mix some of that into my bucket with warm water and a microfiber towel. Dawn dish soap is a very good degreaser and you definitely want that before you are applying any type of paint to the surface. I also really like how affordable it is. I got that smaller bottle at the dollar store and it's going to last me a couple dozen projects. As you're cleaning, just make sure you clean top to bottom, inside and out. I like to do inside the drawers, inside where the drawers lay as you can see right there and just about everywhere because I don't want to miss anything. After washing your piece make sure you always go back and rinse it off with just water like I'm doing here. Now as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be changing out the hardware, so I'm going in with this color changing wood filler. I really love this stuff and I would definitely recommend trying it out for yourself if you haven't yet. I will leave a link to it in my description box if you're interested. Also this product is more of a paste which makes it easier to apply unlike the normal grainy wood filler. I'm not a big fan of that stuff myself. Not only am I filling in the drawers, but also the doors where the hardware was, and there were a few spots on the dresser that needed a little bit of help, so I put some wood filler there as well. After the wood filler was dry a few hours later, I took all the drawers outside to sand. 
I used an 80 grit sandpaper to get the remainder of the wood filler off and then I went back with a 220 grit to scuff sand. Before doing anything else, I made sure to wipe off all of the dust. I ended up blowing a lot of it out because a lot of it was stuck in those corners and my microfiber towel couldn't get to that. Then for the first time, I'm going in with this citrus strip. I got this piece outside because we are going to be applying it to the top and the sides to get that existing finish off. The directions give you two options for this product. One, you can apply it for 30 minutes, then remove. And two, you can apply it, cover it, and then leave it overnight and then remove it. Um, but because I wanted to get this piece done, I did the 30 minute option. I am just using a paper plate and that foam brush, but you can see that that wasn't really working very well for me. So I just kind of took the whole bottle and dumped a liberal amount onto there. And I tried again with the foam brush, but soon you'll see that I just went and got an old paint brush and started wiping it on that way. After 30 minutes, I started scraping it off. With this being the first time, I wasn't really sure what I was doing or what to even expect. And although it was taking some of the finish off, I it didn't do as much as I was hoping for. Um, this footage doesn't really show you, but it was a sticky mess. I used a very liberal amount of the mineral spirits to help guide it off like recommended, but at the end of the day, it wasn't it was just it was just a lot of scraping like two hours worth of scraping just to get this stuff off if i were to go back and do it again, I honestly probably would have just sanded from the start. I knew I'd have to sand even after, but not as much as I did, especially since it took so much work, I would have thought, okay, a lot less sanding. And in reality, it probably was a lot less sanding still, but it just felt like a whole lot, more than it had to be. And then as for sanding, first I went in with an 80 grit to really just get all of it off. And then I went in with a 120 and lastly a 220 to get that smooth finish that I wanted. I put a picture in here because I just am amazed by how much sandpaper this took. Like always, I made sure to wipe all the dust off after sanding was finally finished just because you don't want that on your paint or for this instance stain that I'm going to be putting on, you don't want them to get mixed together. You just want it off your piece before you go ahead and do that. 
For stain, I'm using the Minwax Gel Stain in the color Chestnut. I really like this color and I have learned to really like using this gel stain. You can see I'm putting my hand in a plastic bag. Usually I would use gloves or at least recommend to use gloves, but I didn't have any. So this is what I was doing. And then I just took that foam brush and started wiping it on. I didn't really use the handle part. I just press right down on the foam. I was trying to do this pretty fast because I didn't want it to stain too much or get too dark or be uneven in any way so I was going kind of fast and I was also going fast because I didn't want the leaves to fall into the piece it was a pretty windy day and with fall leaves are bound to fall so I was just making sure to do that and also making sure to go in the same direction as the wood grain As I just said, I was trying to do this in parts so that it wouldn't dry up on me. So I did the entire top and then I started wiping the excess back with a paper towel. I repeated this process in all the other areas that I wanted stained. So I just wiped it on in little sections and then wiped it off with a paper towel and you can see the wood grain and the stain on it and it's starting to look so good. I let the stain dry overnight and started priming the drawer fronts because I was planning on painting these. I used my Zinsser 3 to 1 primer just to get the priming stage done. I primed all the drawers including those three middle inside drawers. Once that primer had dried, I used this paint transformer again and some black paint I had laying around. If you haven't checked out my latest video where I show you how to use this paint transformer, I will also leave that video down in my description box below for you to watch. I'm going in painting these drawer fronts that black color as well as a few areas on the actual dresser that I didn't end up staining so that there would be a black and stain contrast. And if you've been watching me for a while, then you know the drill. After the first coat had dried, I went into the second coat of paint, making sure to do those drawer fronts again, as well as the pieces on the dresser that I didn't end up staining, as well as those two doors that I ended up taking off to have better access to paint. After I finished painting, it was time for the most important part, which is sealing the piece. I am using my clear matte polycrylic and mixing it into the little remainder of paint that I had left in this container 
This is a very cool way to get rid of any of that cloudiness that you might see with these dark colors. You can also do it with the lighter colors. I like to, to second it as a third coat. So I did mention that I was going to be adding in new hardware. I also decided to build a base, but instead of staining it, I painted it. But in order to show some sort of element of surprise, I saved those for the final reveal. So let's get into it. But before we do that, I want to thank Kendall for buying me a coffee. This is a great way to help support the channel. The money given here is used to buy different materials so that the content can be different each week. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave a link to it in my description box down below. The comments here are also a great way to tell me what you'd like to see next from this channel. But now, let's actually get into the reveal. Okay guys, this was definitely a crazy transformation. I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to turn out, especially once we had gotten like an hour or two into stripping down that paint. That was the first time that I stripped down paint before. I have sanded a piece down to raw wood before, but never did this whole stripping thing and it's a lot more work than I had ever realized. I've seen plenty of videos of people doing it, but it just, until you're in that point doing it yourself, you don't realize how much hard work it is. And uh, I'm hoping not to have to do it for quite a while. Although I was thinking about giving up on this piece, I'm really glad that I didn't because it turned out absolutely stunning. Anyways, real quick, let's talk about the numbers of this piece. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I got this piece for $20 off of Facebook Marketplace. Now it's also important to add in the cost of the materials for this project, so I want to go over those real quick. First up, I used about an entire pack of sandpaper, the 80 grit sandpaper. I used pretty much the entire pack as I showed you guys. Um, so I am going to say that I used $7 worth of that because there were a few sheets left over. And the citrus strip that we used for stripping down the piece was mostly used up. So for that, I'm going to put in $10. And $6 for the mineral spirits, which was the product that we used to help get the rest of the citrus strip off. $3 for that BB Froche paint transformer. $15 for the wood that we used on the wood base. $1 of paint since we used that big gallon of paint, so I barely used any of it since I only put paint on the drawers. $2 for the stain because again, compared to that big can, we barely used any of the stain. And then a whopping $45 for the hardware. The hardware was more expensive than the piece itself, so, but then again, the hardware is kind of that last little touch that puts it all together and it's totally worth it to spend that money on the hardware. Um, you can definitely find cheaper options, but that is what I found with the drawers being a little bit weird um, with all of the designs and the crevices. I wasn't exactly sure what to go with, so I just made sure that I went with something super simple. And yeah, it did end up being that much, but, but I definitely think that it was worth it. With all that in mind, the all-in total I had was $109. That is a pretty big all-in, but I think that we'll be able to get our monies back on this one. With that being said, I am planning on selling this piece back on a marketplace for $600. Now that is kind of high for my market, but I do think that I'll be able to get it. And if I don't get it, it's oh, you can. It's always better to price higher because you can always go down, but you can't necessarily go back up. So we're going to start at 600 and if we can't get that asking price, then I'll lower it down to 550 or maybe 500 And again, if that doesn't work, we'll lower it, lower it. But don't lower it too fast. You want to be patient. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video, you guys. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button and interact with this channel by commenting and sharing. 
If you aren't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. I noticed that over 75% of you viewers are watching my videos but are not subscribed yet. Subscribing is free and it really helps our small channels grow here on YouTube, so I would definitely appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below as well. All right, so I'm going to end this video on that note and I will see you guys in the next flip. The next video coming out is going to be on Monday. You guys chose Saturdays and Mondays, so that's what we're gonna stick with and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.